Hello and welcome along to your weekly look at what's in store at the Virgin Media Dublin International Film Festival with me, Kevin McGarhern. Joining me now is film critic Chris Wasser and Annie McCarroll from Spin 1038 to preview some of the must-see movies playing at this year's festival. Gentlemen, how are we getting on? Are you good? Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to kick off first, Chris, with Innocent Boy. Yep. Uh, it's directed by John Connors. It recently won the Virgin Media Discovers Award. Uh, we know he's a charismatic force of nature in front of the camera. What's he like on the other side? Quite impressive too. Um, I, I'd have been following his stage work over the last couple of years as well. Um, he had a show in the theatre festival last year and now he's moved on to the film festival and is taking a piece that was originally a 10 minute long uh, film, which uh, won the Virgin Media uh, Short Film Award. And now it's been, I think, stretched to about 40 minutes. And it tells the story of a young traveller boy who is having a difficult time um, in, it, you know, in his life with his family. And he takes to using his imagination uh, to create fantastical worlds and, in a, in a way to kind of escape everything that's going on in his everyday life. And he also develops, as you can see in the clip, uh, a, a special, unique uh, uh, friendship and a bond with a horse named Queenie. And when I saw this and when I read the synopsis, I was thinking, this is kind of reminding me of the film based on the Willie Vlaughton novel that we had a few years ago at the festival, Lean on Peace, which was a, a, a fabulous story of a boy who forms a friendship with a horse and he's not having the easiest time of it. And they kind of go out and explore the world together. So this is uh, written by uh, John Connors, co-written by John Connors, directed by John Connors. Again, people will know him from Love Hate. They'll know him from being in front of the camera for his stage work. But and he wrote the screen. Very interesting if to acceptance speeches. And his very yeah. interesting <laughs> if to acceptance speeches. But he has had success before writing the screenplay and starring in Cardboard Gangsters, which for my money was a sensational piece of Irish cinema. So I am looking forward to this. Like it, he's kind of the perfect man for perfect person for this job. We don't have a lot of. Traveller directors in Ireland? No, there no, there aren't, and and uh, you know this this is the kind of festival that that allows uh, filmmakers from from every corner of Ireland to come out and showcase your work for the first time, or even if you're expanding on an existing piece of work that, that as I say, used to be ten minutes, now it's forty. Um, uh, hopefully, uh, the the film goes down well with audiences mm -hmm. for a start, but hopefully we start to see more opportunities for young filmmakers from all over Ireland, regardless of uh, their origins, their their living situation, their background. It's all about showcasing new filmmakers. It doesn't matter where they're from. And Andy, uh, we tend to make a lot of quite depressing films in this country, and I think it puts Irish audiences off sometimes. Is this film worth seeing? Should people go out and see it? I think that that, that is going to be part of it because I think you know budgetary restrictions. We're not going to be able to make these big budget blockbuster movies. We do tend to kind of make very human things, and it's a very Irish thing and a very human thing to be depressed all the time. Mm. This seems to be a bit more of a, a kind of an uplifting and a, and a progressive story with that. And I think you touched on there talking about his uh, his ifta speech. Mm. He's not going to be given opportunities unless it's at things like this where he has to scratch and claw for every opportunity that he makes himself. And I think it's, it's good that he's using his platform for, for things like mental health, for things like you know, awareness in the traveller community. But I do think there is so much more to him. Like he is a fantastic impressionist. There's, there is other stuff in there based on, you know, outside of his own spectrum that I think we could really see. Yeah, he could, have been, he could have been pigeonholed as a kind of hard man character actor, but mm. he has a lot of, he definitely has a lot of assets to him, facets to him rather. Uh, moving on now to Rialto. Let's stick with the theme of misery, Andy. <laughs> uh, what's Rialto about? Well, Rialto has Tom Von Lawler, my hair twin. He plays a, a man <laughs> in his 40s who has, you know, seems to have it all, wife and kid, good job. Um, all of a sudden his father passes away, he loses his job, and then he strikes up this you know, unlikely relationship with a 19-year-old with a male prostitute. So, like you said, it kind of is keeping in theme. It's not the, the, the happiest subject to be yeah. touching on. But it's his kind of you know, spiral and you know, awakening to becoming who he really is, as he feels. Um, do you think, given the subject matter of the film uh, and how Ireland has kind of changed in the last 10, 15 years, would this be a very different film if it was made 10 years ago? I think yes and no. I think we have been kind of always you know, somewhat progressive when it comes to, to gay representation on film. You know, we things like Cowboys and, uh, and Angels. We had uh, Breakfast on Pluto a while ago. But I do think the story point would be a lot different. I think he would have been vilified a lot more. And I think kind of topical, you can see in the news now, like the, the Philip Schofield situation, how he's been portrayed a lot differently than an absolutely horrendous example, but Michael Barrymore was in the yeah, 90s when he sure. came out. I think we are a lot more accepting, for want of a better term. I think you are able to tell those stories on a, on a more apathetic level than we would have been, you know, 10, 15 years ago. OK. And uh, Chris, Tom Von Lawler's had an amazing career since Love Hate. Yes. He was in Maze, Infiltrator. He even got a couple of uh, Marvel movies out of it. What's his performance like in this? 
I think he's quite exceptional here. And uh, if there's one thing we can rely on, it doesn't matter whether he's playing a prisoner in Maze. It doesn't matter whether he's playing a weird fish-looking alien opposite Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> buried under a mountain of CGI in Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. Um, he is always committed to the cause and he is always dedicated to the role and he shows up and he gets the job done uh, maybe even a lot better than, than other actors on set. But here he's got Tom Glenn Carney, who we would have previously seen in Dunkirk, a very young, promising uh, uh, British actor, to, to, to spark off of. And and the two of them are very good. They've got some nice chemistry together. Um, they are the highlights of this film. But I think the other interest around this film is the fact that Marco Halloran has written the screenplay. Mm -hmm. And it's based on a play of his from about seven or eight years ago. And Marco Halloran, you know, he wrote and, uh, and, and starred in Adam and Paul. He wrote uh, the, the, the screenplay for Garage, uh, the, which, which was a, a huge success, success at Cannes years ago. Pat Short got a lot of uh, uh, critical attention for it. Um, you've got a good team together. And you've got this, uh, I, I suppose, authentic uh, portrayal of contemporary Dublin, also shining a light in an area which I grew up down the road from. Um, so that's it's all it's you know it doesn't matter. That's how nice old, to see your own. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter own how old that's you great. are. There's always that kind of element of watching uh, a film based or is set in a place where you grew up and kind of going, oh yeah, I know that place. I know that <laughs> place. Um, but you've got a magic team, so hopefully it finds an audience, and hopefully the end result is is a good one. Brilliant. So moving on now to a film, I'm very excited to see the true story of the Kelly gang. Um, Andy, can you tell us, uh, first of all, is the title accurate? Is it a true story? Definitely not. Actually, the first thing that pops up on the screen is <laughs> yeah. none of the events in this film are true. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so it, it's kind of a, a stylized, looks very much like a, a Guy Ritchie mixed with Gucci version of, of the Ned Kelly story. Again, it's a story that it's like one of the earliest films ever made. I think 1906, one of the first films was uh, The History of the Kelly Gang. Now we have this version, it was the Heat Ledger one uh, a couple of years ago as well. Mm -hmm. It's just Mick Jagger did one in the 70s. Yeah, we won't yeah. talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that bad. Yeah. Um, but it is, it's just a story that, you know, opens up to people, I think, because you've got, you know, the, the outlaw element is always something that's interesting, like everyone from Billy the Kid to, you know, Clint Eastwood. Yeah, he's kind of like no Irish man. Jesse James. Yes, and then if at the end... We can claim him as our own. Yeah, well, he's the, the son of Irish immigrants, so yeah, yeah, the more outlaws we can claim, the better. Yeah. And just for a more, like, stylized version, like, he dresses up in a, a suit of armour as well, so he's kind of the, the original superhero he's, he's as well. He's kind of, like, of all the outlaws, he's kind of got the crappest armour I've ever seen. He looks like a sort of a metal post box. And <laughs> still somehow really cool to see. It's like Lord Buckethead and Iron Man had a kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris, director Justin Kurzel. He had a great start to his career with Snowtown, which I loved, uh, Macbeth, and then kind of took a bit of a swan dive with Assassin's Creed. But it looks like he's kind of back doing what he does best, a kind of mix of Grindhouse and Arthouse. Would that be accurate? Uh, probably, yeah. That's probably a good way of putting it. I mean, he did make a complete balls of that Assassin's Creed film. But, I mean, he also had Michael Fassbender not giving a great performance, uh, Marion Cotillard. It just, it was, a, it was a video game film in which the audience wasn't allowed to play the game that's on screen. There's and nothing more frustrating than watching your mate play a video game That's exactly while you're not allowed to control her. <laughs> what we got with Assassin's right. Creed. So that could have potentially ruined them, but we had seen before his uh, his previous uh, collaboration with Fassbender working on Macbeth that mm. he this guy can make a, a, a decent film. So this has been years in development. He has rounded up an impressive cast. Charlie Hunnam is in there. God love him. God loves a trier. And Charlie Hunnam is trying <laughs> still. Um, he's got Russell Crowe, who seems to have turned things around. He's got George McKay, who is a fabulous actor. And actually, I, I remember watching him in Captain Fantastic a couple of years ago, uh, alongside Viggo Mortensen, uh, an Academy Award-nominated film that just seemed to sink and, and I, I still talk to people that, that that just have never heard of this thing and it's a, it's a wonderful wonderful film he was brilliant in it it's so great to see him now front and center of 1970 and gaining you know the kind of critical attention and acclaim that he should have years ago and now front and center of this so looking forward to it excellent i'm really looking forward to it as well thank you very much chris and andy and if you want more info about the films playing at this year's virgin media dublin international film festival head over to the website diff.ie. That's our lot for now, but I'll chat to you again next week with another look at the exciting lineup of movies heading our way from February 26th. Good luck.